Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's proceed to varicella zoster virus. But before we proceed to the varicella zoster virus, let's do a recap on uh, herpes simplex virus because it is uh, very important in the exam and there is there are many notes to be uh, asking the exam for um, uh, in this uh, case or in this okay. disease. Okay, so uh, let's go to uh, uh, herpes uh, uh, simplex virus uh, epidemiology. Here uh, in the epidemiology, it is uh, uh, very common to the degree that 100% of population will get uh, or, or have uh, already uh, uh, herpes simplex virus above uh, 60 years old. And a third of them, a uh, third of uh, uh, this uh, proportion or third of the population will have a recurrent disease, which is uh, uh, somehow uh, dangerous and somehow annoying. Okay, uh, this is for the epidemiology. What is the pathogenesis of uh, the disease? Uh, for any herpes uh, uh, infection, not just herpes simplex, as we mentioned, uh, uh, the, the primary infection occurs and then the uh, uh, virus uh, doesn't die or the viruses don't die. They mm -hmm. are latent, they become latent in the uh, trigeminal ganglion or latent in the sensory ganglion in general. And uh, after being latent, they are reactivated again and the recurrent disease can occur. Uh, let me ask you here uh, some question. Is the primary site uh, uh, necessarily the same site of the uh, science of, uh, sorry, the site of recurrence? So if I have a primary, a primary nerve affected, which is, uh, for example, the maxillary nerve. Mm -hmm. uh, and the secondary or the recurrent disease, um, is it necessary the maxillary nerve dermatome? Oh, no, I guess it is not. Okay, so here mm -hmm. uh, the primary site or the science, uh, site of recurrence uh, isn't necessarily the same that of the primary site. This is important and this may be asked in MCQ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, after the pathogenesis, let's go to the primary uh, ocular disease. I have for the primary disease, I may have ocular disease, I may not have ocular disease. It is uh, somehow uh, for the primary disease, it is like uh, flu uh, manifestations, it is like uh, non specific upper respiratory tract infection. So, in the primary uh, ocular disease, I have here blepharoconjunctivitis, which is um, uh, also uh, undistinguishable from any. Uh, uh, conjunctivitis. For example, I have blepharoconjunctivitis uh, in this case, which is herpes simplex virus. I have also blepharoconjunctivitis from other causes like adenoviruses. How can I uh, differentiate between them, differentiate between the blepharoconjunctivitis of herpes and the blepharoconjunctivitis of uh, adenoviruses? By the way, it, it, it won't be different in the treatment, but for the diagnosis, I can or I want to differentiate between them. Mm -hmm. For the herpes simplex virus, I have uh, uh, the herpetic vesicles, which is uh, unique or not that unique, but it is, it is characteristic or more characteristic to the her herpes simplex virus. I have also the dendritic keratitis. By the way, the dendritic keratitis may occur. Dendritic keratitis, which is characteristic, more characteristic to the recurrent disease, not the ocular, uh, not, not the primary ocular disease. It is characteristic more to the secondary mm -hmm. disease, but it may occur, dendritic ulcer. Okay, so uh, these are uh, more common in herpes simplex virus. If you see a membrane or pseudomembrane, the conjunctiva, this means that you have uh, adenovirus rather than having uh, the herpes simplex virus. So this is a difference, and this difference, which will be written in green, which is membranes. Membranes are uh, characteristic more to the adenoviruses. Uh, there is uh, another uh, uh, difference which is not that reliable, not that 100% accurate, which is what? Which is, um, it is uh, the laterality. Typically, uh, the herpes is unilateral and typically the adenoviruses are bilateral, but here for the adenoviruses, they, they may be bilateral, but asymmetrical and one eye may precede the other eye. So mm -hmm. uh, the, I can't rely on this. Uh, also the herpes simplex virus, 3% uh, of cases, the majority of cases are unilateral, but 3% of cases may be bilateral. So this is uh, not 100% uh, uh, accurate. So the laterality, we can't rely on laterality uh, uh, totally. Okay. So these mm -hmm. are the differences between uh, the primary ocular infection of the herpes simplex virus and the adenoviruses infection. So let's go to the uh, secondary ocular infection, which is uh, extremely important. Here, the secondary ocular infection or the recurrent infection 
uh, can occur by reactivation. And what triggers reactivations? Here, the triggers or uh, the stimulators for reactivation of the drug is decreased immunity or psychological stress, systemic infection, contact lens wear, and so on. But here, all of these factors, as I mentioned before, um, uh, uh, couldn't be confirmed by the study, which is herpetic eye disease study. For the herpetic eye disease study, uh, I think because of um, uh, uh, problems and bias in, in the study, not uh, uh, in the factors, uh, I guess these factors as being um, uh, actually a trigger or being mm -hmm. actually triggers for uh, the recurrence of the disease, but uh, uh, the study of herpetic eye disease study, HETS study, uh, couldn't confirm these um, these uh, factors. Okay, uh, this is the pathogenesis of the secondary uh, infection, and as I mentioned, the, the the site of the secondary infection may be different from the site of the primary infection. Mm -hmm. By the way, the primary infection uh, treatment it, it has no treatment. Um, uh, let me ask you: if you want to do serology for the primary infection, I guess uh, uh, serology is not important. Not that because uh, uh, the disease is self-limited and uh, the disease um, uh, may may uh, pass unnoticed. Uh, you you may had uh, you may have uh, had um, a herpes a primary herpes simplex virus and you don't know. Uh, for me, it is the same. Uh, I may have had um, um, a, a primary herpes simplex virus and I don't know. So it is non-specific and it is self-limited. So serology is not important, but not because, uh, or, or this is not the only cause that serology is not important. Uh, most of the people will have positive serology, positive serology because they may have uh, had uh, a herpes simplex virus before, but it is a valuable negative. If you have negative serology, this means that you are naive for uh, 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 herpes simplex virus. You don't have herpes simplex virus. Okay, so okay. Uh, serology here, it is uh, a valuable negative. Give me a valuable negative, but the positive is not important because I don't have um, a clue uh, whether this uh, these antibodies are um, uh, recent or old, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so um, uh, let's go to the, um, uh, or let's talk about the secondary infection. And for the secondary infection, I have a, a characteristic epithelial keratitis. I may have peripheral conjunctivitis as well. Here, the peripheral conjunctivitis isn't different from the peripheral conjunctivitis of uh, the primary disease. So it is indistinguishable uh, from the primary disease. Uh, and uh, the epithelial keratitis, for the epithelial keratitis, I have uh, two issues. I have um, dendritic ulcer like that. And for this dendritic ulcer, as you see, uh, there is terminal dilatation or terminal bulb like that. And uh, this ulcer is stained with, with, uh, well, with uh, rose bengal stain. Uh, the edges are stained with rose bengal and the bed, as I drew, is stained with fluorescein dye. So it is uh, positive for double staining. Uh, the edges are stained with uh, Rose Bengel and uh, the bed is stained with um, and yes, uh, here uh, the, the Rose Bengel is um, uh, staining the edges due to lack of glycoproteins and uh, the fluorescein is staining the bed due to lack of a tight junction between uh, the cells so the uh, dye will be uh, will be leaked or will be pulled uh, into the straw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is um, uh, the double staining. And if you give uh, corticosteroid, if you falsely diagnosed uh, this case, it, it, it may be uh, converted into geographical ulcer like that. This is called amoeboid ulcer or geograph uh, geographical ulcer. And uh, again, it is stained with double staining. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, uh, that you, you mean that uh, it's misdiagnosed as allergic conjunctivitis or something like that? Or something uh -huh. like that. Uh, you you misdiagnose uh, you misdiagnosed uh, this case as having simple allergy or or simple uh, ocular surface disease like scleritis or any ocular surface disease which is not infectious. 
So oh. you give a corticosteroid and this corticosteroid uh, caused this, uh, um, this change into a larger ulcer, into amoeboid ulcer or geographical ulcer. Uh, uh, by the way, it may occur uh, uh, not uh, uh, only due to corticosteroid, uh, the patient may be immunocompromised and this patient will have, uh, again, this appearance, which is amoeboid or geographical ulcer. Okay. okay. Um, uh, after that, after healing of the ulcer, it will leave scars. So you can see, you can see that there is ghosting of uh, the dendrite. Uh, I can see the dendrite right now, but I can see a ghost of the dendrite. Here, I don't, I don't have an active ulcer, but I have uh, an artifact, or I have a ghost of uh, the previous ulcer. This is a, a landmark that herpes simplex virus passed by this eye before. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, after that, we can talk about the, um, not the complications, it, it may be a signs of immune uh, related reactions into this cornea. For this cornea, I may have immune related reaction, which will cause here uh, uh, mid-stromal uh, keratitis, which is called um, uh, interstitial keratitis or deep stromal keratitis, which is called endoceliitis or disform keratitis. So, uh, these are immune-related reactions to the reactivation of the virus. So the virus here is reactivated, and after that, these effects uh, occurred. But before this, before we proceed to the interstitial keratitis or the disform keratitis and their way of treatment and the head study, which is the final thing to be mentioned uh, here for the herpes simplex virus, let's talk about the lab investigations for the primary sorry, for the recurrent disease. And let's talk about the treatment and the management for the secondary disease, uh, secondary or the recurrent disease. Um, I told you that the primary disease is self-limited, but here the secondary disease may be self-limited again, but it is dangerous and uh, it uh, uh, requires here um, a care and treatment. Mm -hmm. But before, let's, for, uh, let's go to the lab investigations. We, you can see that uh, the uh, epithelial cells, uh, you may find intranuclear inclusions, intranuclear inclusions like that. And this is a characteristic for um, having a herpes simplex virus. This is characteristic for HSP. By the way, you know uh, I, 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 um, uh, that I told you that we have two types of herpes simplex, herpes simplex type one and herpes simplex type two. Mm -hmm. uh, type one is affecting uh, the area above the waist and type two below the waist. But uh, uh, as I told you, either can cause infection in either location. So type one may, may uh, infect the genital area and type two, but it is rare. And type two may uh, infect the eye and it is, uh, again, it is rare. Mm -hmm. Um, for uh, the lab uh, investigation, if I have a specimen for <coughs> a cornea infected with herpes simplex virus, and this is, by the way, it is common, and I mentioned that it, is, it came out in uh, advanced uh, 180 uh, 2020 exam, uh, 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 a specimen like that, which, uh, containing, uh, which is containing uh, intranuclear inclusion bodies. Okay. Um, uh, you may have uh, giant cells, but uh, the intranuclear inclusion bodies are more uh, specific for herpes simplex virus. Mm -hmm. uh, how about the management? <clears throat> As I mentioned before in the introduction, in the simple introduction, I mentioned that it is uh, uh, um, treated by trifluoridine, treated by a cyclovir, a topical acyclovir or topical uh, trifluoridine, topical acyclovir ointment, it is not uh, is not commercially available in US. It is not commercially available, by the way, um, uh, here in Egypt, as I told you, uh, oh. you, you uh, um, can hardly find uh, topical uh, acyclovir, acyclovir ointment. But here the trifluoridine may be given as an alternative uh, eight times daily, eight times daily. This is uh, uh, the regime of uh, trifluoridine. You can uh, give uh, uh, also topical gancyclovir, but it is not uh, that effective. It is not that effective. Uh, by the way, gancyclovir is less toxic uh, to the eye uh, than that of uh, trifluoridine, than the toxicity of trifluoridine. Uh, but uh, uh, here it is not that effective. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can give oral acyclovir 
uh, what the value of oral cyclovirid may be an alternative to the topical treatment because it may have the same efficacy uh, and less toxicity. By the way, you can uh, continue to the topical for uh, at most 40 days. Uh, and what after 40 days? After 40 days, you may uh, cause epithelial toxicity or, or epitheliopathy. Uh, and uh -huh. this uh, ocular surface toxicity is somehow, somehow uh, annoying for uh, uh, the patient and it, it may cause uh, visual disability. Uh, you can use, in, in these cases, you can continue to use uh, oral acyclovir, and the oral acyclovir is, uh, again, it is uh, uh, present. You can uh, use the prodrug of acyclovir, which is uh, valacyclovir. Um, this is the treatment of, this is the usual treatment of cases of herpes simplex virus, uh, epithelial keratitis of herpes simplex virus. How about corticosteroids? I mentioned this before, corticosteroids are contraindicated. Contraindicated corticosteroids in these cases of uh, epithelial keratitis, uh, uh, except that I have um, herpetic keratoviitis or herpetic uveitis or herpetic iritis. Here I may need uh, corticosteroid, but under a good cover with oral and topical or topical only um, uh, treatment of um, uh, treatment with uh, antivirals topical antivirals or oral antivirals. So here, uh, the corticosteroids are contraindicated because it may uh, uh, cause progression of the ulcer from dendritic ulcer to, or typical dendritic ulcer to uh, void, yes, geographical or amyloid ulcer. Uh, this is um, uh, the principles of treatment of um, uh, uh, herpetic keratitis. Uh, let's go to the interstitial keratitis or uh, the stromal keratitis. You have uh, stromal keratitis, which is interstitial keratitis or disform keratitis, or you may have necrotizing, necrotizing stromal keratitis. By the way, this necrotizing is extremely rare. It is not that mentioned. Uh, it resembles uh, the ulcers of the bacterial and uh, fungal infection of the cornea. So it may, may resemble uh, a bacterial corneal ulcer or it may resemble fungal corneal ulcer. So uh, these must be excluded before, uh, uh, before you give the diagnosis of necrotizing uh, stromal keratitis. The disformed keratitis or the deep keratitis, it is uh, primary endotheliitis. It is inflammation of the endothelial cells, which can cause uh, uh, epithelial edema or can cause corneal edema in general. For the interstitial keratitis, it is amid stromal inflammation and the stromal uh, uh, keratitis or the stromal disease of um, the herpes is the most annoying and the most disabling uh, 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 sign and manifestation. It occurs due to immune-related reaction. It is not an active disease. Stroma, the, here the stroma doesn't contain the virus. Here the, the epithelium is uh, somehow intact. Uh, and there is just the reactivation of the virus can cause this immune-related reaction here inside uh, uh, the middle of the cornea or in the middle of the cornea like that. So here it is treated well with corticosteroid according to uh, the study of herpetic eye disease study. And this is the first question to be asked in this study. Is corticosteroid effective in treatment of uh, uh, topical corticosteroid in treatment of interstitial keratitis? Yes, it is extremely effective. Here, this is uh, number one in questions. And number two, um, uh, is oral acyclovir uh, 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 to be added to trichloridine or the usual treatment of um, uh, uh, herpetic keratoviitis? Is, uh, is, is it additive? Is it uh, effective? Is it more effective? No, uh, and the answer is no. Here in herpetic keratoviitis or in herpetic iritis, it may, it may have a rule, but this, uh, uh, with this study due to the small sample size, we had uh, just 50 persons. It is uh, statistically insignificant. Statistically insignificant. So the answer is no. And um, for, for uh, cases of interstitial keratitis, is, it, uh, is oral acyclovir uh, important in cases, of, um, in cases of interstitial keratitis to be added, uh, again, to be added to the topical treatment? Here we, we are not talking about the oral as alone or as a monotherapy or as a single uh, therapy. We, we can use the oral in combination with 
um, uh, the trifluoridine. So we have two groups, uh, a group with only trifluoridine and the group with oral and, uh, um, and topical uh, uh, antiviral. So there is no additive value here for cases of interstitial keratitis. Uh, uh, the question number four, which is uh, uh, regarding regarding uh, uh, adding oral acyclovir in predicting uh, the recurrence of interstitial keratitis, and here it is it has no value, no value here again in predicting the uh, recurrence or in, in decreasing the recurrence of interstitial keratitis. By the way, the most important factor to predict the interstitial keratitis is recurrence. As I, I told you, that recurrence can lead to more recurrence. Recurrence can lead to recurrence. So if you have a recurrent disease, it is likely to have, again, the disease in the future. Uh, so uh, here, uh, the oral cyclovir uh, uh, doesn't reduce uh, uh, the recurrence of interstitial keratitis. Uh, and uh, uh, the fifth question, which is extremely important, uh, the oral acyclovir in uh, uh, the role of oral acyclovir in decreasing the recurrence of the epithelial disease or the active disease, uh, recurrence of the active disease. And here it is extremely important. Uh, so you can, you can min give a maintenance dose for patients with uh, known herbs, uh, maintenance dose of oral acyclovir. Here, oral acyclovir is recommended uh, to prevent or to decrease the recurrence of the disease. Okay, to decrease the recurrence of the disease. This is extremely important. And this is given routinely in cases of uh, keratoplasty. Uh, if you, if you uh, do keratoplasty in a patient with uh, herpes uh, simplex virus of um, uh, a previous herpes simplex virus, you uh, must give him a cyclovir. You must give him oral acyclovir. Acyclovir here is extremely important to prevent the recurrence of uh, the herpes into the corneal graft, the new corneal graft. Uh -huh. And uh, the, 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 the last question of HITS study, herpetic eye disease study, uh, is uh, um, that what are the triggers of, uh, or what triggers the uh, condition, or what uh, are the causes of recurrence of the disease? And uh, we have mentioned that psychological stress and uh, uh, general infection or systemic infection and uh, contact lens wear, uh, corneal abrasion, and so on. Here they are uh, um, all. Uh, factors that may trigger the disease, but they are not confirmed by the study. This is the herpetic eye disease study. For From this study, you can conclude that you can treat um, the cases of, uh, um, you can treat the cases of uh, herpetic uh, interstitial keratitis or stromal keratitis, whether it is endotheliitis or uh, it is uh, uh, interstitial keratitis, you can uh, treat them with uh, topical corticosteroids, with topical, again, with topical antiviral or trifluoridine. Um, there is no uh, additive value of oral acyclovir. If you add oral acyclovir to this regime, it, uh, you, you may not uh, have um, a good value. You may not have an additive value. It is, it is good, but it is not additive to the topical trifluoridine. But in cases of uh, uh, herpetic uveitis, you may add, there is um, uh, a trend of adding oral cyclovir, but the study, uh, um, um, the study favored this, but uh, uh, this wasn't st statistically significant due to the small sample size. But some corneal uh, specialists uh, or, or consultants uh, can uh, add oral cyclovir in cases of herpetic uveitis. Okay. Uh, right now, uh, let's talk about the complications. And for the complications, you may have epithelopathy due to the recurrence of um, the disease and due to the topical, uh, the, the recurrent use or the uh, multiple use of uh, uh, topical antivirals which cause epithelial toxicity. You may have also, after that, you may have um, uh, limbal stem cell failure or limbal stem cell deficiency. Uh, here for limbal stem cell deficiency, uh, the causes are the same, which are the recurrence of the disease and also the multiple use of the topical antiviral drugs. As I told you, uh, the epithelial toxicity can occur after a while, can occur after um, 
after uh, um, uh, 40 day, for, for 14 days, 14 days, after 14 days, you may get epithelial toxicity from these uh, topical antivirals. Uh, and after that, you may have uh, neurotrophic keratitis. You have decreased uh, sensation to the level that you can cause it, uh, uh, call, call it hypostasia. Hypostasia or hypostasia or a decreased sensation and this will cause neurotrophic keratitis which is uh, usually it is central or it may be uh, nasal, uh, nasal or inferior nasal like that okay uh, this is the site of the ulcer it may have raised edges with the epithelial cells may resemble by the way the dendritic ulcer but it is not dendritic it is pseudo dendritic to a great extent it is smaller and pseudo uh, dendritic and stains less with rose bengal so you can or doesn't stain uh, at all with rose bengal the edges are uh, are not affected the edges are uh, normal epithelium so here you, do, you don't have rose bengal stain or lysamine green stain in the the edges of the, the ulcer um, uh, this is the neurotrophic keratitis and uh, this may be treated with what I can treat this ulcer with using topical uh, lubricants and uh, um, uh, punctal occlusion. You may occlude the punctum to uh, preserve the, the uh, watering of the eye. Uh, and uh, also you can treat it with the lateral tarsorophy or paramedial tarsorophy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, by the way, um, uh, you may have another complications for um, uh, the herpes, which is irregular astigmatism. By the way, before irregular astigmatism, you may have something called metaherpetic ulcer. What is this metaherpetic ulcer? You may have interstitial keratitis. Uh, this interstitial keratitis like that. Over it, you may have epithelial disease like that. And this is called. This is not called uh, epithelial keratitis. It is metaherpetic keratitis because it occurs occurs uh, due to uh, the presence of uh, interstitial keratitis. And again, it uh, stains less with uh, rose bengal and So here, uh, the staining of the meter ulcer is less than that of uh, the epithelial keratitis. And by the way, the, the differences between them is uh, somehow hard to be uh, uh, to, to, it is hard for you to differentiate between metaherpetic and herpetic keratitis. Um, uh, you may have a corneal scar and irregular astigmatism, and for this cause, uh, you may use rigid gas permeable contact lenses. For these contact lenses, it is uh, uh, better or it is superior than uh, regular spectacles or regular glasses to correct the refractive error of the patient. These are um, 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 almost all what we said uh, in uh, the herpes simplex virus. Mm -hmm. For the varicella zoster virus here, let's go to varicella zoster virus. Here, uh, 